Hi again then guys, and so we've got another Gran Turismo 6 top speed tune for you today, and this time it's for the BMW liveried version of the McLaren F1 GTR. If you're unaware, you can find this in the BMW dealership, rather than the McLaren dealership, and it's pretty much the most popular version of the McLaren F1 racing models that are on the game. And it's fairly obvious why. It has the long tail look, has more of a Le Mans prototype kind of feel to it, and it's better looking, I would say. So, I would recommend having racing soft tyres. For ride height, we've got the rear as low as possible, with the front 20mm higher. Any higher than that, and you don't gain that much speed, if any, and you just start to sacrifice handling. For the springs, we've got 17 on the front, 18 on the rear. Dampers for compression on 1, extension 3. Anti-roll to 1, with neutral camber and tow. For the gearbox, an auto setting of 230, then for the individual gears we've got 3.9, 2.5, 1.8, 1375, 1075 and 875 with a final drive of 2.4. For the diff, the lowest initial torque, highest acceleration and lowest braking. You want both of your power upgrades obviously and your downforce set to a minimum. Traction control, as always I would recommend turning off because it is much, much faster off the line without it. And so, yeah, I would say this is probably the most desirable version of the McLaren F1 race car that's on the game. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the actual Le Mans winning version, the black and greyish one. Certainly a good car, I just don't like the look of it as much as this one. I prefer the long tail look, I think it really suits the car. And I hope that they add the road-going version of the McLaren F1 GTR, which was just called the F1 GT, to the game. It's the rarest McLaren F1, the most exclusive model, and it has pretty much the same overall spec as the normal versions. I believe it's a little bit lighter, very similar performance, but improved stability due to the long tail, plus it just looks so cool. I've been fortunate enough to see one in real life and it really makes an impression. It's a very big car. The McLaren F1 usually is quite a compact vehicle, but the GT long tail version makes it considerably larger with the extended nose cone and of course the long tail. And it's a very good looking car, I think. As far as performance on this one, as you can see, it's pretty quick, especially for its power. It's not the most powerful of GT class vehicles. And so its top speed is actually pretty impressive. It cruises at around 256 under its own power. You can extend the final drive a little bit more if you need more draft potential. I don't see very many people racing this for top speed racing. If you do need it for, say, 280, 290 kind of speeds, obviously you want to extend the final drive a little bit more, but that will affect your cruising speed. Now, as far as handling at high speed, the car's weight is relatively low at 950 kilos. Lighter than you'd expect, actually, for a car of its size, so the handling is pretty good on the curve. Overall, the performance isn't exactly Le Mans prototype worrying. There are some prototypes that this can beat in a straight line. Uh, it's faster, for instance, than the Toyota Hybrid. It's faster than the Nismo LM hyb uh, yeah, Hybrid. It's faster than the Zytec. It's around a similar kind of speed to the Mercedes CLK LM, that kind of thing. Uh, a little bit slower than the Panos, so it's pretty well placed in terms of top speed. It's faster than the XJ220, faster than the Lister Storm, so it sits pretty well overall. The handling is very popular. As a track car, the handling suits it really well, as you'd expect from a, from a McLaren F1. And overall, if you haven't bought this car, I would actually recommend doing so. It was one of those cars, back when it was introduced on GT4, you could only win the car. And the car kind of had... A status on that game which arguably it didn't really deserve because it wasn't that good it didn't really deserve to be won whereas now now that we have things like PP which you didn't have back then the car is much more relevant so like I said if you haven't tried the car it's definitely worth a go and I would say it's a better machine than the McLaren F1 GTR in the black and grey livery and if you're new to the channel and would like to keep up with tunes like this as soon as they come out, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thanks for watching.